to Loud in Action, where we are here with part three of our video series on O Group. And today we're looking at command and control. Very specifically, what we're looking to do in this series of videos is allow you to focus on the mechanisms that we are looking at specifically. So in this video, we're not going to be looking at firing mechanisms and, and uh, aspects like that. We're looking very specifically at command and control mechanisms. In the next video, we're going to be moving on and looking in a bit more detail at some of the mechanisms of, of firing. So what you're going to see here is a couple of turns in a game. We're going to look, first of all, at the first turn, which is going to involve a lot of deploying onto the table. And then we're going to take a bit of a jump as the action hots up and move along to the third turn. And it's just going to give you a bit of a contrast between what our uh, players are using their command and control actions to do during that first early phase and then what happens when the battle is uh, heating up. So we've asked uh, Dave and Christopher to uh, run through those turns for us and we're going to look at them now. Okay, we're now back on the Eastern Front and the deployment's been done and we're ready to start turn one. So let me just walk you through the game turn and the phases that make up the game turn. There are three phases, that's the command phase, the combat phases and the regroup phase. So the command phase is when the players roll their battalion O group dice. Uh, that can be normally nine dice, but it could be ten for large battalions, which in the case of this scenario, both sides have large battalions, so they'll be rolling ten dice in their battalion O group to represent the fact they've obviously got more units and a little bit of extra command and control. If we were fielding a warm battalion with just two companies and minimal supports, they would only roll eight dice. Uh, the command phase uh, determines who gets uh, what in the terms of HQ orders and company orders. And once players have sorted that and made a note on their, their dice or their respective uh, order markers with some very nice two fat lardies available counters, um, they can then move on to determining the initiative. Now the initiative, as you'll see when we move through the turns, is, is important because whoever wins the initiative can dictate whether they take the offensive combat phase, i.e. go first, or whether they pass it to the defender and take the defensive combat phase. But for the majority of times, the player who wins the initiative will be going first. And uh, the initiative is basically worked out with a 2d6 dice roll, the total of which is added together and then added to the HQ orders. And that gives you your score. The winner takes the initiative. So that's um, the command phase. The combat phases I've already hinted at are the phases where each player um, issues his orders for his units to undertake actions. So you could call in your artillery, call in your battalion mortars, get your platoons to move, to recon, to rally. So that's the turn you do that. And then finally, once the two phases have been completed, you move to the last phase, which is the regroup phase. And the regroup phase is um, a, a small phase where any units that didn't get any orders directly from the player are allowed a limited uh, move, rally or deploy action. Um, the attacker only gets two regroup actions and the defender gets one. Now these are free and above your normal order allocation, so they can be quite important, but it just represents the rest of the battalion perhaps moving up slowly under its own steam. And that is the game turn. So here we have the German Battalion O Group dice roll. So what have we got? We've got a very good three sixes, uh, the five, the four, and three threes. And we've got a one, and there's a two there as well. So let's now talk through what those actually mean. So the German player has rolled three sixes from his battalion O group dice. They represent HQ orders. So every six that you roll will give you another HQ order. Now, if you remember, the German HQ had started the game on three HQ orders, add three to that, takes the German Battalion HQ to six, which is the maximum. The rest of the scores from five to two gave us 
six company orders. Now these are your standard orders that you get each turn to uh, order your units to carry out various actions such as move and fire. So that's our order total for the turn. Finally, there was one one, and as we know, ones count for nothing. That's the friction of command, etc. So those are the German dice rolls. So this is the Russian Battalion O Group dice roll. And we have two sixes, one one, and therefore seven dice rolls of five to two. All right, now to analyze the Russian roll, the Russians rolled two sixes, which actually isn't two HQ orders. Because I'm a second rate battalion, whenever I roll multiple sixes, one, instead of being a HQ order, is converted into a company order. So instead of getting two HQ orders, I only get one. So therefore, I'm on one HQ order at the moment, because I lost one from the opening bombardment, I'm now up to two. So you can see, as a second rate, I gain HQ orders at a much slower rate. Mother dice rolls, I rolled seven five to twos, which is seven company orders, plus one because a six got converted, that's eight company orders, so a nice stack there. And I rolled one one, which indicates again, no order friction on the battlefield. So now we've completed the battalion O group dice rolls and we come to the initiative. And this is simply decided by both players rolling 2d6. So we'll do that now. So I've rolled seven and the Russian has rolled eight. And what we do now is we add the HQ order total to that score. So seven and six is 13, eight and two there for the Russians is 10. So you can see that the Germans have not only won the initiative, but you can see the advantage that first rate battalions can have over second rate and the advantage of a good bank of HQ orders. Okay, so the Germans have taken the initiative for the first turn and they're going to take the offensive combat phase. So by winning the initiative and taking that first phase, the Germans also gain a, another company order. That's across all armies, they would get that. So whoever wins the initiative and takes the uh, offensive phase gains an extra order. So that gives me seven company orders and a healthy six HQ orders in the bank. So how does uh, this translate into actually uh, moving the units and come on in controlling the battle? So it's very simply, what I'll do is just give an overview of one, of one turn and this is what we're going to do. Uh, first of all, I'm just simply going to give one order uh, to this combat patrol and I'm gonna uh, order it to move up uh, to the woods. I'll give it a tactical bound to get into the woods or as far as possible. And a combat patrol moves by simply rolling 2d6. So we can go eight inches. So eight inches, we'll take that combat patrol nicely to where I want it. And he sits there. And then with a, another order, I'm going to order this combat patrol to move into that BUA and take off position in there. Again, it's just 2d6. And they've rolled six inches, but that's enough to get in. So to support that move, to secure those BUAs, the platoon that's already on table, I'm going to order those to move up and support. Now I don't want them to go too quickly, just want a steady advance. So we'll just go for a normal 2d6 move. And that's very steady with a five. So they'll hug the hedge line and go five inches. Again, another order's used up there. So, the next aspect I want to do is, I, as I want to push forward on this flank, I think I'm going to need some recon. So if you recall, I had a recon for two. So I'm going to use one order to deploy my reconnaissance armoured car platoon on the rear table edge. So one order goes next to them there, and I'll move them forward. Uh, what I won't, I won't do any recon at the moment, I just want to get them into position. So these armoured cars are classed as fast, so it's a 2d6 movement roll, but they get a bonus of 4 inches added on top. So that's a very healthy 10 rolled, so they can go to 14. 
a tactical bound, I should have stated before, would have probably been the edge of the field. So let's just halt there and take up a nice defensive position. So that's their order there. Now, that leaves me three orders uh, left. And I think I'm happy with the progress on this flank, unless I want to bring another platoon on, which I don't. So I'm going to leave that there, and now I'm going to move over to one company and finish the moves. OK, and now we'll conclude the German combat phase by moving over to one company, and we have our remaining three orders. So what I'm going to do with the first order is I'm going to give that to uh, that combat patrol. I'm going to try and push it forward as far through the woods as possible. So let's see what we get with that. <laughs> A rather reluctant four inches. So we'll move up and just get, get to there. Now, two orders left. So definitely uh, one to the infantry platoon. I definitely want these to come up through the ravine. Um, again, Fortunately, uh, I've had no reaction from the Russian player so far. It's obviously keeping his powder dry. Uh, but I don't want to risk a rapid move. I'm just going to do a normal uh, move with a potential fire at the end. But I've rolled a good nine, so they've made good progress up the ravine. So they'll push all the way up to there. And that will be the penultimate order. Now, that leaves me with just one order left. I do have... Again, that healthy six in the HQ, but I don't really want to use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that one order uh, for the Russians in case the Germans need to react to any Russian actions in their phase. So that concludes the German combat phase. OK, for the Russian phase, the first thing I want to do is call in some artillery. Now, my foe is on this rather large hill here. And for the purposes of this scenario, it is the tallest terrain feature on the board. Now, at the beginning of the turn, I can call in off-board artillery. However, a disadvantage of being second rate is that in order to call it in, I need to have five plus HQ orders. As I only have two, I can't call it in. If I was first rate, I could call it in no matter how many I had. So therefore, I can only call in mortars. Now, I can see the German platoon, which is advancing down the ravine. So I'm, I'm gonna call in mortars on that target. As it's a fresh target, it's going to cost me two out of my eight orders. So I'm going to put my two orders by my mortars to signify I'm activating them. Now, we'll go through the mechanisms of exactly how artillery fires in the next video. Okay, so after the Russian mortar barrage, the German platoon took absolutely no shock. It was rather ineffective. However, the combat patrol moving alongside them was in the beaten zone and did take a shot. So that has caused it to be removed from the board. So what other command decisions do I have to make for second company? Well, at the moment, because it's a rather cagey German advance, I don't need to shoot or reveal any ambush units yet. And I don't think I need to deploy on any PT markers simply because Again, interdiction turns, I've got three, I don't want to waste orders. So I do, however, want to deploy another combat patrol with second company. So I'm gonna spend an order and I'm gonna place my combat patrol in the orchard here in front of my company commander for an order. Okay, so now we are over on the right hand flank with first company. So what do I wanna do? Again, it's a very cagey German advance, so Definitely don't want to reveal my ambush unit or deploy on any combat patrols yet. So I'm just going to use my five orders to shore up my lines with more combat patrols, especially because I only got three in the opening um, dice rolls. So I'm going to use my first order and I'm going to deploy a combat patrol in the edge of this BUA here. So that's one order in there. And I'm going to spend a second order to deploy a second combat patrol in the front of that wood there on the right hand side and finally i'm literally just going to spend an order to move my company commander up a couple of inches just to get to the t34 wreckage again that's cocked oh, we will we will re-roll it <laughs> of three that's great but that's all i need just to get him behind there behind some cover now i do have two orders left over even though that's the end of my turn i don't want to do anything else 
And because these are not HQ orders, they are lost and are not carried over. But I'm okay with that because they haven't been wasted, I haven't needed to react or do a lot of um, shooting at the enemy. So that's fine. So that's the end of the Russian phase. So there we are, that's the first turn done and dusted. What we're going to do now is move on to turn three, where the action has moved on and advanced, and we're starting to see uh, some of the real action of the battle taking place. So again, we're just going to focus on the command and control mechanisms at this stage. So let's see how Dave and Christopher get on here. Right, we've now moved on to turn three of our Eastern Front game. Uh, and these are the uh, Battalion O Group dice rolls. So, as we can see, the Germans have scored 1-6, um, they've scored 8 fives to 2s, and 1-1. One, one. Now, of course, the 6 would normally give a, an HQ order for the Germans, but as their HQ order total is already at 6, the HQ order is simply converted into a normal company order. So, therefore, for this turn, the Germans will be on nine company orders and still maintaining their six HQ orders in the bank. So what have the Russians rolled? Well, I've rolled one six, which still converts to one HQ order. So I go up to five. I've rolled six five to twos. So I get six company orders. But annoyingly, I've rolled three ones. Not only is that no orders, but three ones means a hesitant company. Now we'll get on to what that exactly means when we come to the main phases, but for the time being, I will 1d6 to determine which of my two upfront companies goes hesitant. So a 1, 2 or 3 it will be company 1, 4, 5, 6 will be company 2. So I've rolled a 5, which means company 2 is going hesitant for this turn. Okay, so we're carrying on with turn 3. Uh, the Germans have won the initiative, again helped by their 6 HQ orders stored in the bank. And they've taken the offensive phase and we're going to start over here with one company. In the previous turn, the company commander managed to push one platoon uh, right up to the edge of the ravine and redeployed another combat patrol to assist on the edge of the forest. But what he's going to do now is he's going to take advantage of the Russian interdiction turns and try and really push up on his far right flank. So we're going to deploy a platoon on this combat patrol here. So that's going to cost one order. So we'll remove the combat patrol and replace it with an infantry platoon. And they go in there. Okay, the next action will be to let's get the company commander to move up to a more central position. So that costs him one order to move. Company commanders always do uh, what's called a rapid move which means they roll three dice and take the two high scores. So out of that, he can go seven inches, so he can push further up the ravine. So he'll just go to there. Now, I think I'm fairly happy with the uh, advance of one platoon, but this new platoon, I definitely want it to take advantage of the fact that there doesn't appear to be very many Russians over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the company commander order to issue this platoon a second action in the same phase. So we mark the company commander to show that he's used his company commander order for the turn. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give this platoon another move order to move up as far as they can through that wood. So the initial order goes in, which is a cost of one. And I have to roll a d6 to establish the cost of any extra orders because he's pushing his troops to go further and do more. Now, a first-rate company commander uh, is generally better situated than a second-rate company commander. It could cost them a lot more orders. But we'll see what the dice roll gives us. <laughs> Typically, I've rolled a 1, so it's the worst, and that will cost me an extra 2. So pushing them to do that extra move has cost me three out of my total of ten orders. So we're going to do a steady move into the wood and they've only gone five inches. So to gain five inches, well they've just got into the wood with that, but that's been quite expensive in terms of orders. 
So as far as the Germans are concerned, that's going to be it for one company. They've used up a lot of orders, but they have managed to push their front line quite a way forward. So after the German player has used his company commander order, you can see the German platoon has pushed into the woods and has nearly reached my combat patrol. Now, my combat patrol in that woods is very restricted. I can't advance it or move it forward and I can't deploy off it. However, as the German platoon hasn't actually moved on top of the combat patrol yet, it isn't destroyed and I can react with it because a couple of guys there, which the combat patrol represents, can see the German platoon pushing up. So, in order to react with draw, I place an order down and I roll 2d6. As you can see, I rolled an 8, which means my combat control can successfully fall back into this field-like area here. Okay, so we've now continued with the German turn. We've moved over to two company. Now, in the previous turn, I pushed my reconnaissance platoon forward after they had successfully reconned this built-up area. However, they were then bounced by this anti-tank gun that deployed off a combat patrol and successfully suppressed one of my armoured car sections. So it's imperative that I now uh, deal with that anti-tank gun. So the way I'm going to deal with that is I've still got five orders left, five company orders left. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will put an order in and I will give a rally action to that platoon. Now I'm confident, which is their troop rating, so any scores of three or more, I will rally off one shock. Let's just roll the dice. There we go. A rally action gives me three rallies and I've taken off three. So I'll remove one from that section and I'll reduce the suppressed section down to one. Now, again, I'm gonna do the same tactic. I'm going to use the two company commander order to issue a fire order to those anti-tank guns to put some fire down on the anti-tank gun. So the order goes in to fire, but again, I have to roll the dice to see what the cost will be for pushing them uh, to do that second action. And I've rolled another one. <laughs> so, so it's a further two orders. This has been very expensive. So what I'll do now is I will put fire down on that anti-tank gun and we'll resolve that. But that only leaves me with one order left out of the full 10 I had at the beginning of the turn. So it's been expensive. Okay, so now over to the Russian right flank with first company. So for this turn, I'm only down to four company orders because I've done some reacting. Primarily, after the recon unit fired at my anti-tank gun and inflicted the shock, I return fire, did a successful hit and managed to resuppress one of the recon vehicles. So I made out of four company orders, so I really need to prioritize what I want to do this turn. So I think the first thing I need to do is keep firing at those recon. So I'm gonna put an order in to my 45 millimeter and I'm gonna fire. So I need a spot because they're recon at not close range. So I roll our dice and it's a terrible miss. It's gone miles over. <laughs> <laughs> so, my second order, I am going to reveal an ambush because Germans are coming up fast and I need to get men on the board ASAP. So, this BUA, although it has a combat patrol in it, I double bluffed him and also have an ambush unit in there as well, which you are allowed to do. So, the ambush unit in this BUA was indeed a Russian platoon with an attached Maxim MMG. So a nice little stronghold there for the Russians. So now I'm able to fire at those Germans in the BUA. So after activating my Russians with the Maxim in the BUA, and after a very successful fire, the Germans in the adjacent BUA were suppressed and decided to bug out. So that was excellent shooting. Now I'm only down to two company orders. So what I'm gonna do is I need to keep this anti-tank gun pinning down that recon. So I'm going to give it a company command order to simply ray off that one shock. So I need 1d6 and I'm starting to roll to see the extra order cost. So here's the original order cost to rally. So how much extra? So I've rolled a 5, which is good for me because 2nd rate battalion means it's dice roll of 1 to 4 
is two additional orders. A five is one additional and a six is no. So as you can see, if you're second rate, it's gonna cost you more orders usually to do a company command action. So that's good. So it only cost me one additional order, which is my other company order left, which means I don't have to go into my bank, which is really good. So therefore, I get three D6 to rally, and on the four plus, I rally one off. I've got all three, luckily. So that's off, and it's back up to perfect health. So as you can probably remember from the Battalion O Group dice rolls, I rolled three ones, which means it's, there's a hesitant company, and it was second company who went hesitant. So what does that mean? It means that I get very limited actions available to me in my turn. So the only things I can do are close range fire, which there clearly isn't any, and also I can rally, but again, I've got no one to rally. So I've got nothing to do in my phase because Hesden also prohibits you from deploying onto combat patrols, so I can't reinforce the line. However, the saving grace is that I can react as normal. So the only reaction I did was I pulled this combat patrol back as the Germans on my left flank started advancing through the woods. But so as I can't do anything in my face, that ends the, the Russians turn. So there we have it. That's the end of this, the third short video. I think you can see there that, uh, uh, and obviously a lot of this is uh, potentially over dramatized um, for film, but you can see where the company commanders are looking to focus in and drive the action forward, it's costing them more of their orders. Whereas if they're feeling more in control and able to stand back, they can apply those orders more broadly across a wider range of units. So that reservoir of command ability is uh, limited and certainly not limitless. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and we look forward to coming to you very soon with the next chat where we're talking about some of the more detailed mechanisms that take place on the tabletop, such as firing and close combat, and also the video where we back that up. Okay, well, once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you soon on Loud TV.